One of my favourite Thames estuary venues, but one which I haven't fished for a while. Grey's Wharf is particularly well known for its soles, and for me, it's a free rod venue. May is a little bit early for soles here. I generally don't start fishing for them until July. However, the weather is ideal, and I know that one or two of them have already been coming out. I've arrived a bit earlier than I normally would, because I know it's already been quite popular down here. My first task is to sort out my lugworm. The old stuff in this collapsible bucket doesn't look too good and needs to be refreshed. So my first failure of the day, the string attached to this bucket isn't long enough to reach the water. Um, I have arrived here far too early. Fortunately my other bucket contains some fresher lugworm dug the day before. These are in much better condition, but I'm not sure whether they'd last for the whole of the session. Normally you'll need quite a lot of bait here because of the crab activity and generally speaking ragworm outfishes lugworm. But at the moment I've only managed to dig lugworm, so that will just have to do. The water is always coloured here, so you don't have to fish at night for the soles. However, it can be quite slow going which is why I tend to set up free rods that maximises your chance of getting a few bites because you can fish at different distances and see which distance the fish are on and then swap to that line if needs be. I also like to play around with different rigs so I'll start with a different rig on each rod and again swap over to whichever one is working if one is outscoring the others. As I'm setting up I'll quickly run through the location in relation to other nearby marks there are of course marks further upstream, such as Barking, Thamesmead and Woolwich, and downstream such as Canvey, Old Hallows, Sheppey and of course South End. Grace is the first venue north of the river and east of the M25. It's in Furrock, adjacent to Tilbury Docks and directly opposite Swanscombe Peninsula. There are a number of marks you can fish, from near the pier at Walden Road to Grace Beach itself. The bulk of the parking is off Argent Street close to the Wharf pub, close to where I'm fishing today, which is probably the most fished part of this area. It looks peaceful with a landscape park and gated residential areas behind, but industry isn't that far away as you can see in the distance, and while setting up I'm accompanied by the noise of a helicopter whirling above me. The first rod I've set up is a Gravel Technos Surf XT. I'm using this with a free hook clip down rig and trying out some new braid, 50 pound straight through. That's not really needed here, but I'm giving it a go just to see how it performs. The rig I'm using with this rod has slightly longer snoods than I would normally use down here, so I'm fishing this with bass in mind and not chucking it too far out. My old lugworm hasn't survived the heat and has been disposed of, so fortunately I did dig some the day before. I just hope there aren't many crabs about because I don't think I've got enough to last for very long. Should I run low, I'll just have to fish with two, or maybe just a single rod. I'm not bothering to clip down at the moment, since I'm intending to use this rod on a shorter line, but I've still got the option to be able to clip up and chuck it much further out. So, just a gentle log fin. My other two rods are the Technos Dewey's, and I'm setting them up with the hollow tips since at times there can be a problem with floating weed and quite often you're having to haul up quite a large chunk and when the tide starts to ebb the current can be quite fierce so I tend to avoid using the finer splice tips. My preferred rigs for this venue are boom rigs and to nail it on the bottom I sometimes attach a coffin lead. I was just using two rods and a five ounce flat lead would be attached to the bottom. However, since I'm using three and I don't want lines to get tangled I'm using one with wires, still 5 ounces though. 
This is the rig I expect to catch most on, so I'm glad there aren't any distractions as I'm setting it up. Casting some way up tide, and this one's at medium range. For my third rod, another boom rig, this time with short booms. I've only just purchased these direct from China, so I'm giving them a go for the first time. They do need some modification. I'm removing the clips supplied and changing them over to something a bit more substantial. This rig is for distance casting, so to avoid it tangling with the other two already out there, I'm putting on a slightly heavier lead. This should keep the rig in place even with a build up of weed on the line. The hook lengths are 5 inches, 10 pound in strength and with size 4 Aberdeen hooks. I do prefer to use number 3 Nordic bend hooks but unfortunately I seem to have run out of these. A simple nylon loop to wire loop attachment here. Before casting this one out, I'm bringing in the other two rigs just to rebate and have a quick look at the finished setups. Some people would use tripods here, but I prefer to utilise the railings. There are several ways of doing this, like wrapping your rod bag around the railings, leaning your rod against the centre post, or using an earwig attachment. So here are the three rigs I've set up for this occasion. Using three rods, I like to cast them out in sequence and bring them back in in the same sequence rebaiting unless bites should intervene. I'm fairly pleased with how far I can cast this new short boom rig.
It's now an hour before the top of the tide, and I'm expecting my first bite fairly soon. It's usually just before the top of the tide, and up to about an hour and a half or two hours down when I'm most likely to catch here. It's probably just me, but it's only on a very rare occasion that I'll catch outside of these times. Just before the tide starts backing up, I get my first bite. And it's to the new rig cast at distance. Not only that, it's also the species I've come here for. And I'm glad to say it's also sizeable. I find it pays to strike at small knocks, as more often than not, the fish is hooked in the mouth, so easy to take the hook out. And now that the tide is in, I can give my remaining lugworm a fresh drink, since my bucket now should be able to reach to the water. Any luck? One so. bite to the middle rod, but I'm also attached to a fair amount of floating weed. That comes off, but so does the fish, if there was one attached that is.
and there's a fair amount left above the leader knot which needs to be removed, otherwise that could hamper my next cast. Soon after recasting, fish number two to the distance rod. Only this time it's a whiting. for a long while. No, this is the first time I've come since July last year. Yeah? Because it was rubbish last year. I didn't, I only bothered coming once. And, uh, but I looked at it yesterday. And, you know, there's a few fish caught yesterday, so. And there's no crabs, that's the main thing. <laughs> I was down here Monday, a bloke had a bass set, about two pounds. All right, that's all right, isn't it? I missed a bite whilst talking to the local, but soon afterwards got my third fish and my third species. Not massive, <laughs> by any means, but a welcome flounder. The tide starts backing up and it quietens down for a bit. I'll get my next bite just as it starts to turn. Species number four, a bootlace eel.
although slippery, a cloth is not needed since its lip hooked. After that eel, I swapped my rods around as the tide had started to ebb. Unfortunately, I lose the rig which gets snagged and the leader gets cut right through. So I'm having to replace that leader. Out of the corner of my eye, I see a bite on the rod that's still next to me. So, quick strike, left-handed, and I feel the fish on. Species number five, which I'm pretty pleased about, because now I've caught all the fish that you're more than likely to catch here. Cuddling are a possibility in the winter, and I've seen smelts caught here as well, but the five species I've already caught are the ones you're most likely to get. Before I could recast, a bite on a close in rod, and it's whiting number two. I've only got a few worms left, so I'm just down to fishing two rods. I do reassemble the one that got snagged up earlier and put away my near rod, and that was a good move. Despite the fact I only get one more fish, but it was to the short boom rig cast at distance again, and another sole to finish the session. Despite only catching seven fish, it's been a useful session one which I've pretty much enjoyed and I know for next time which rigs I ought to be using.